Now we're going to try and get some movement out of the mid back, your thoracic spine. You've got 12 vertebrae that comprise the thoracic spine and they are kind of like a queen on a chessboard. They have more than one direction and they are responsible for creating a tremendous amount of movement in the upper region. So one of the ways that we're going to try and achieve better movement is through rotation and we'll be in a quadruped position to start off with. And in this position we'll hope to see that the hands are directly underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips. What we'll want to do is take one hand and bring it either back behind the lower back or up behind the head. Whichever one you choose, you're just going to keep it here. So now I have three points of contact, both knees and one hand, and I'm just going to allow that shoulder to drop down slightly. But I do want to keep the supporting arm straight. I don't want the elbow to bend and lower myself down completely. But I'm just actually going to rotate around that supporting shoulder. And then reverse directions, turning the rib cage and the head upward, and then back down again. Now to achieve this nice rotational motion, I can push through the floor with my supporting arm, driving myself upward, similar to a push-up, just putting pressure into the floor to get me to rotate up. Now at this point in time, we want to make sure that the lower back isn't doing any of the rotation really. It should be very, very minimal. In fact, the lower back made of five vertebrae only are supposed to rotate about a degree and a fraction maybe more than that for each of the five. So when you add it up, we've got maybe about five or six degrees of rotation that we get from the lower back. And most of the time, if our mid back is all restricted, then we're going to ask neighboring areas, most likely, to take up the slack. And therefore, the lower back gets into trouble and we might get some aches and pains from it. So if we can open up this region and quiet down this region in regards to rotation, things might have a better way of moving. So one way, if you are of that kind of category where you find your lower back trying to do the majority of work here, what you can simply do is shift your hips back a little bit toward the heels so that they're behind the knees. This will actually flatten out the lower back and help to prevent it from doing much of the rotation. So now, can we get more rotation through that mid-back? Be sure to, to assess before and after this movement just like any other and you might find that rotating in one direction is actually quite effortless and easy compared to the other side. Now it could be one or two reasons. Maybe you're already rotated into one direction and trying to go further is quite difficult compared to how much more movement you have going the opposite direction. That's one potential reason. The other reason could be that you might be rotated in this direction, so going in that direction is relatively easy, but you don't necessarily know how to coordinate movement going the other side. So that might be the reason. This is why we want to assess before and after as well as know what's going on with your posture because if you do have a rotation in this direction and you have a difficult time going that way, well, maybe that is the direction you just need to try and incorporate more into your movement pattern compared to the other side where maybe I'm rotated this direction and it's hard this direction. Do you really want to try and jam it further into that position? Not quite sure. Assess, move, reassess. What's the outcome?